Hey guys, Roy here from Roy Cruz Photo, and today we're out here near the coast in Tongyeong, South Korea. And I wanted to make a video to share something that uh, I've really been enjoying lately. And uh, it's a great thing to do in the winter uh, when client work has slowed down a bit. Uh, and that is bird photography with a manual focus lens. And those who have visited my channel or blog before know that I'm a big fan of adapting classic old manual focus lenses to modern mirrorless bodies like the Fujifilm X system that I use. And I think it's a great way for uh, photographers to explore new focal lengths as well as new genres of photography without necessarily breaking the bank. So I picked up this 1970s era SMC Takumar 400mm f5.6 lens off of eBay for about 150 US dollars and that's a great price for a super telephoto lens. Now I know that lens prices for classic lenses, manual lenses have gone up since then since there's been sort of a resurgence in popularity. But uh, you know the second market is anything goes and there's a lot of lens options out there so you might still be able to find an equivalent lens or you know a great deal on this one. And I actually featured this lens in a past video, the M42 lenses on Fuji X video, but uh, it never really got much use after that. And in fact, this has been one of my least used lenses ever until recently. So I've always wanted to use this lens for bird photography, but the closest bird habitat or wetland that I knew of is about two hours away in Changwon. And uh, every time I've tried to go there, it's always been closed for, you know, avian influenza concerns and such. So it's never really panned out. But a couple of weeks ago, I was out with my family and uh, right here in Tongyang, and we found this great spot that has uh, quite a few birds that seem to be staying warm for the winter. It's sort of a mini wetland right in our own town, just 10 minutes away. So I've been back a couple of times already and I've really enjoyed the challenge as well as the lessons learned from the experience. So taking a closer look at the gear, I'm using the Fujifilm X-T4 plus the SMC Takumar 400mm f5.6 by Asahi Pentax. I've adapted the lens with a KNF Concept M42 to Fuji X adapter. Overall, it's a really nice and simple setup. The X-T4's built-in in-body image stabilization, or IBIS, allows me to shoot handheld much more easily. All right, so welcome to my random couch in the middle of nowhere. I apologize, I couldn't give you a better background with the birds uh, and such, but uh, I tried really, really hard to find a good spot to shoot in and failed miserably because that area is literally a roadside and all you could hear are trucks and cars and it's impossible to shoot there. But uh, I'll make sure to include a lot of B-roll to uh, give you an idea of what the, what the place looks like. Anyway, I wanted to discuss a few settings and configuration that I use when shooting birds or photographing birds with a manual lens on the Fuji X system. So the first setting that you want to start with, especially if you've never shot manual lenses on Fuji X before, is the shoot without lens setting. Now, old lenses do not have the electronic contacts and the camera can't talk to them. So the shoot without lens option allows the camera to take photos even if it doesn't detect a lens. And that's very important for classic lenses. Another setting that you want to have dialed in is the mount adapter setting. And this is especially important for bodies like the X-H1, as well as the X-T4, uh, which have in-body image stabilization. And this tells the lens what focal length you're using, and it allows the IBIS to work properly. An added benefit to having this setting dialed in is that you'll have correct focal length in your EXIF data in your files. So moving on to some general settings, you'll likely have to boost your ISO a little bit. I personally find myself at around ISO 800, since this is not a very fast lens. Um, I'm usually at f11 or f8, and I'll discuss that in the next point. But boosting the ISO allows you to get to faster shutter speeds. And typically with action photography, you want to be in the 1 2,000th of a second range in order to freeze motion, as well as get sharp photos. And of course, you could also slow down the shutter speed a bit to achieve certain motion blur effects if you want. So another helpful thing to do, especially with older lenses, is to stop down the aperture. And this helps get rid of aberrations, green fringing, purple fringing, uh, which is prevalent in a lot of older lenses. And uh, I find myself usually at around f8 or f11, and that will help get rid of aberrations as well as get a sharper image. 
Another benefit of stopping down, of course, is that you get a deeper depth of field, which makes it easier to get into the focusing range, and it helps you to increase your hit rate. And in conjunction with stopping down and increasing your depth of field, you'll also find it really helpful to turn on your focusing aids, such as focus peaking, which is my personal favorite, and that really helps to increase your hit rate and get more images in focus. So you may also be wondering if I'm in single shot mode or in burst mode, and the answer to that is I am in single shot mode. I already have a lot of throwaway images because it's hard to focus as it is, so I'd rather rely on my reflexes and uh, get that decisive moment and capture the moment in single shot mode. So I'm not an expert bird photographer by any stretch of the imagination, and as I mentioned, I just started this journey. But uh, I have found that the general rules of photography still do apply, as well as the rules of composition. And I wanna discuss a few things that I've learned along the way. So as with outdoor photography in general, the best time to shoot uh, bird photos is in the morning, early in the morning or late afternoon. And uh, this will give you, of course, that golden light. And uh, I also read online that uh, birds tend to feed in the morning and hunt for food and I've pretty much found that to be true. So morning is a good time to go out and photograph birds. Hopefully it's not too cold. Personally, I tend to go out around mid-morning or mid-afternoon a bit more, uh, because as I mentioned before, my lens has to be stopped down a bit. So that extra light uh, coming from the later time of day uh, is really helpful. So another thing I've learned is to be patient. Now, a lot of the time, uh, the birds will seem to do absolutely nothing. They'll just be sitting there. But if you invest a little bit of time and you take some time to observe their behavior, um, you'll start to notice patterns and even times of day when they're, they're more active and that'll help you to get more interesting photos. You'll also have to be patient with yourself because manual focusing is not easy. And at first you'll have a lot of blurry images, a lot of throwaways, but uh, you know, don't get frustrated. Just keep at it, keep practicing and uh, use those tools and settings that I mentioned previously and uh, it'll be really helpful to increase that hit rate. So as with many types of photography, uh, you'll want to capture peak moments of action. And uh, I've found that with bird photography, uh, right as they're taking off or mid-flight or while they're landing, those are some of my favorite moments. And also when they go hunt for food and uh, catch fish and uh, also you know, interact with other birds, uh, in other words, fight, um, those are all really great moments to capture. And you could also capture, you know, peaceful moments as well where they're just kind of sitting there. And lastly, remember the composition tools that you can use to add interest to your photos. And I'm gonna show you some of my favorites right now. that's a glimpse of what I've been up to lately and uh, I've really been enjoying exploring bird photography and I love that this old classic cheap manual lens was the gateway to that. Speaking of gateway, one sort of negative uh, result of all of this is that I am now very interested in getting a Fuji XF 100-400mm to 400 millimeter to explore bird photography and wildlife photography even further and uh, my wallet's not going to be very happy about that and uh, this actually reminds me of a funny meme that I saw and uh, I'll share that with you right now. But in all seriousness, there's a ton of options out there for photographers, be it old manual focus lenses or the latest technology. And with a bit of research, a bit of gem hunting, uh, you'll be able to find unique lenses and bang for the buck deals that'll help you to explore photography further and have more fun. So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful, especially if you're looking to do something similar in your own photography. So what about you? Do you have a favorite manual focus lens or have you ever tried any sort of high speed or action photography with manual focus lenses? Please let us know in the comments below. If you like what you see, please hit the thumbs up. And if you wanna see more, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. And as usual, I'm going to end the video with a slideshow of some of my favorite images that I took with the SMC Takamar 400 millimeter and the Fujifilm X-T4. Again, this has been Roy from Roy Cruz Photo. Thanks for watching and take care.